So in today's video, we're gonna connect the dots between the foods that you eat and your body's immune system response. Right behind me is a ton of literature and I have a lot right here in my hand that is illustrating and connecting the clinical immunopathologic abnormalities that are common with the C word, you know, the coronavirus pandemic that's affecting the world. Well, that this pandemic is worsened by diet-related diseases. And so I wanted to make this video and share all this literature, and we're gonna share a bunch of literature throughout this video to help to convince the people who are not yet convinced that the foods that they eat, how that impacts their bodies immune defenses, okay? Because this is, it's so disappointing, all right? We have gyms are closed and then McDonald's a drive through There's like 100 cars in there. It is, to me, it's just really disturbing because what we're trying to do here is to prevent the hospitals from being overburdened with infected patients, yet people are still making nutrition and diet choices that compromise their immune system and increase the probability that if and when they get exposed to this transmissible virus, that they will have a more severe disease. And so in this video, we're just gonna break it down and talk about some key concepts, talk about immunometabolism, talk about glycemic variability and how high glycemic variability and even insulin use, this is a this is the latest paper that we're gonna dive into, uh, and, and how being obese compromises the manufacturing site of your T cells, which are really important for immune system health. We're gonna get into meta-inflammation. We're gonna get into all that. And so I do wanna thank this video sponsor. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, the largest community of online learning that's out on the internet. I learned from Skillshare to make and edit videos just like this back in 2012. So I make all my own Instagram content, for example. I learned Photoshop on Skillshare. They have an amazing resource. So if you wanna start your own online business, if you wanna learn how to be a consultant, if you want to do your own bookkeeping for your side hustle, you can learn all of that. Finances, anything, accounting over at Skillshare.com. And actually the link below will get you the first 1,000 people that use that link, get a free trial of their premium membership over at Skillshare. And then after that, it's really affordable, 10 bucks a month. Like I said, I've used the program for, gosh, over eight years now. I rely upon it all the time for product photography, for Photoshop tutorials, editing videos, everything. So definitely check it out and take advantage of that free trial, especially during the winter months when you know workload might not be so uh, intense and you can learn some new new tools. Okay, so let's dive into this and first just kind of talk about the bigger picture, okay? So let's say someone in your life is like, you know what, I don't believe you. There's no connection between the foods that I eat and how I live my life because this is what people say, my diet, my choice. Well, it's like, well, not really because you're, if your choices increase the probability that you'll end up in the ICU and if we're closing down businesses to prevent the ICU from being burdened, your choices impact everyone, okay? So the paper that we're gonna talk about here first, and this is the big picture, is by this researcher at Harvard. I've been following his work for a while. An excellent researcher, I've been following this stuff for a while. I would recommend reading many of his free papers that are on the internet. So he has elucidated this field of immunometabolism. And this is a scientific study connecting your immune system with your body's metabolism. And so let's just make a super simple analogy, okay? Let's say right now my fasting glucose, because I have not yet eaten today, it's about one o'clock, maybe it's like 85, 90, okay? If I were to cut my arm or someone came in here and punched me in the face and caused a bunch of damage, my blood sugar would increase because my, there's more demand to mobilize uh, white blood cells, macrophages, monocytes, basophils, all those sorts of immune system cells are going to need me metabolites to create interleukins, cytokines, to prevent an infection, okay? So the field that characterizes that in this field of study is called immunometabolism. So we cannot disentangle our immune system from our metabolism. They are two sides of the same coin. You might hear uh, things like meta-inflammation as well. That's another way to characterize. If you have insulin resistance and you have hyperglycemia, just like I talked about how your immune system depends upon your metabolism to make stuff, well, if you have metabolic challenges, what also happens is it, you create some chronic inflammation. So it goes both ways. So we, we need to recognize and honor our body as, a, as an interconnected system and network. And we cannot expect our immune system to have an appropriate host defense and, and mount an efficient response to a pathogen if we're being challenged nutritionally because they're both connected. Does that make sense? So that's just a, a very easy way to understand this field of immunometabolism uh, on, a, on a deeper level. 
And so that's why we, when, when, for example, this study, which is right here talking about uh, glycemic variability. So again, whether we're talking about influenza, whether we're talking about rhinoviruses, whether we're talking about COVID-19, the, the, the disease caused by SARS-CoV-2, glycemic variability alters the outcome of an infection. Glycemic variability in people who have electic surgical procedures. Let's say you go in and you know you have um, a bone spur, right? right? Um, your glucose stability going into that procedure will determine whether or not you get a post-surgical infection, for example. Your body composition going into an orthopedic or elective procedure determines that, as does um, when you get infected with the virus, okay? So your diet choices, friends, are intimately in, involved in the outcome of an immunological event. So keep that in mind. This was the latest study um, that I thought was really interesting. So I can flash up some links to prior videos where we talked about glycemic variability. So if we think about your blood sugar variability, you know, you don't want a bunch of swings in your glucose level. Now, a lot of Americans have this because what they do is they eat a lot of processed carbohydrates, usually paired with fat. Think french fries, think pizza, think donuts, think pastries. You have processed carbs, liquid fat, you know, oil, fat oils, and that creates insulin resistance. So you create these a lot of variability in your blood glucose levels. So glycemic variability and also insulin use is linked with, guess what? You know this word, the C word, poor outcomes. So we've been talking about this since the papers have been emerging since March, friends. This is like an old thing we've been talking about on this channel, but it's new uh, in the sense that more and more people are realizing that I get it now because we now have uh, some, some outcome data. So insulin use, when people are in the hospital, if they're infected with the C word, guess what? Their outcomes are much worse. The case fatality ratio, the CFR in insulin users is like 29% versus 2% of, of non-insulin users. So do the math there. I mean, if you, if you put, and think about how many unfortunate Americans uh, are, are using insulin to manage their poorly controlled diabetes. So again, to say that your nutrition has nothing to do with immunity is, is, is not scientifically justified. A lot of people will say, well, that's a false equivalency online, but here's all the data. So we've talked about blood sugar. Now let's get into obesity and talk about how obesity compromises your immune system. Now, we'll talk about some of the ways you can lose fat, but first let's talk about why fat is bad and why you should be exercising, okay? Well, first of all, number one, when you have excessive amounts of body fat, particularly if it's around the visceral area, and let me just pause, we're not just picking on visibly overweight people. Uh, about 20 to 25% of normal weight individuals are metabolically obese, okay? So just because you're not visibly and obviously overweight or obese, doesn't mean you're free from this obesity-related inflammation that compromises your body's immune system. So this is called metabolic obesity, normal weight. And those individuals have this same problem, which is called thymic atrophy. Again, we, we have many videos on this. The long story short is the manufacturing facility for the key T cells in your body is around right here. It's your thymus gland. This naturally atrophies with age, okay? As you age, unfortunately, the, your immune competence goes down with age. Obesity accelerates that. So if you would like to age faster than you regularly would, gain a lot of weight, don't exercise, watch Netflix all day and order everything off Uber Eats. Of course, you don't want to do that, but that would accelerate your body's natural um, immunocompetence. How excessive uh, adipose tissue leads to immunocompetence. And so this is the article, Obesity and Immunocompetence. And what it's referring to is the fact that excessive visceral fat in particular comp uh, leads to an acceleration of the aging of your thymus gland, which is not good. So what can we do? We know now that there's a ton of data showing how one pandemic worsens the other, how we have an epidemic of chronic disease. So the chronic non-communicable diseases like diabetes, like hypertension, like neurodegenerative diseases, like insulin resistance and obesity, all of those chronic diseases worsen the C word, the pandemic. And our public health measures are not addressing these chronic conditions. We're allowing people to stay even more sedentary by closing gyms. We're keeping McDonald's open. Uh, we're allowing Uber Eats. The most, by the way, uh, the, one of the most unfortunate popular 
food item ordered on Uber Eats has been, guess what, McDonald's french fries. So more people are ordering french fries from their phone while they're sitting on their couch than ever before, which is bad because we are worsening the chronic disease epidemic, which is making more people vulnerable to immune issues, okay? And we wonder why trapping people in their homes and making everyone wear a mask is not slowing down the cases because we, we are ignoring the epidemic. And so we, we've done other videos about this syndemic, about how the C word, this COVID-19 pandemic is really a syndemic where we have a collision, a crash course between a transmissible disease uh, with this high prevalence of non-communicable chronic diseases and they're worsened by each other. So what we need to do is improve our body's competence within the immune system. Well, how can you do that? What are some things that are actually actionable? Uh, what I would like to do is refer to another video where we talked about nine steps that you can do right now to improve your body's immune system health. We talked about breath work. We talked about intermittent fasting and, and we shared all the science. We talked about sauna therapy. But today let's talk about exercise. And I think a lot of people don't realize that exercise can counter uh, immunosenescence, which is that, that ability of your immune system and your thymus gland to atrophy over time. So being regular about your exercise and being intentional about exercise can mitigate or offset some of the obesity-related atrophy of your thymus gland and can help mitigate immunocompetence. So look, you might not have access to a gym. Your gym might be closed. Maybe you live in a studio apartment and you don't have any weights. What I would suggest is doing bodyweight exercises two days per week. Two days per week meaning hitting every major muscle group two days per week, but trying to exercise at least 150 minutes every single week, okay? Now, so this could be pushing and pulling on different days. So, you know, upper body pushing, so this would be involving your chest. So push-ups, you can do military raises. When I first started working out, I used, you know, uh, soup cans, okay? You can go get some heavy soup cans, you can go to a, a concrete, you can go to a hardware store and make concrete blocks I and mean, you can get really creative. But the idea here is you want to alternate pushing and pulling. So you can do some pull-ups, that would be pulling. You can do uh, air squats, lunges, all of these things. You want to focus on, on exercise because regular exercise, walking, walking up hills, doing sprinting, all of these things help to reverse the immunocompetence that by the way, this naturally happens as you age. And various, various studies like this one and this, this review paper that I think is really interesting and there's a bunch of great images that we can show on the screen here have shown that regular exercisers have a, a much um, reduced ability of this thymus aging over time. Now, that's one side of the equation. The other side, obviously, is your nutrition. So there's a lot of controversy over, you know, is it all about calories, energy in, energy out? What about keto? What about carnivore? I think any diet that compresses your glycemic variability and minimizes exposure to, to and, and minimizes the creation of inflammation by reducing chronic inflammation, so um, you know, things like anti-nutrients, lectins, um, allergens from food, those are going to raise your baseline level of inflammation and put more strain on your body's immunometabolic axis. Okay, so this is where like a low-carb ketogenic diet comes in. This is where a carnivore diet comes in. This is where intermittent fasting comes in. We know that intermittent fasting has a large dossier of research showing that it's effective for the immune system health, but any nutrition program, and this can be low-carb paleo as well, um, anything that is going to minimize um, foods that are going to stimulate your immune system is going to help it, your host defense naturally from a, an exogenous pathogen like a virus or a bacteria, okay? So you just need to understand that there's so many different things going on here, but you want to improve your body's glycemic control. We know that poor glycemic control, elevated levels of insulin, not good when it comes to this particular virus. We know that having excessive body weight challenges your body's immune system and accelerates immunological aging. In contrast, by regularly exercising, we can slow down or mitigate the natural age-related immunocompetence that happens over time. We, we know that fasting is good and all the other lifestyle factors, but I think it is now ignorant to say that there is no connection between diet and nutrition and immunological outcomes. It's scientifically inaccurate to say that there's no connection between the C-word pandemic and diabetes and obesity. There, there are so many papers here that have uh, elucidated this and talked about this. 
from back from the H1N1 outbreak, uh, swine flu to SARS, uh, the first SARS to MERS, and now SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Okay, we have tons of data here. Okay, so if you have friends that are still going to McDonald's, they're still ordering um, on Uber Eats and, and whatnot French fries, you need to say like, look, I know you're so vigilant about masking and cleaning and social distancing, why aren't you so vigilant about your diet? Because that ultimately is going to impact whether or not you are part of the traffic in the ICU, right? Sometimes when we're in traffic, it's, we complain like, oh, it sucks there's traffic. We're like, you're part of the traffic. So, you know, the way that we can help minimize that, um, you know, traffic on the freeways is maybe taking a bike, walking and all that. Well, the way we can minimize traffic in the intensive care unit is by educating people that we care about that the choices that they make will reduce their probability that they're going to have a problem with their immune system. So hopefully in this video, at least you have some of, in my opinion, the best scientific references and articles that you can use to learn more about this complex topic of immunometabolism, connecting diet, nutrition, and immune system health. Um, hopefully you can share this video with someone that is not yet convinced that the nutrition choices that they make, how that impacts their immune system, and help them to at least get to be thinking like, okay, maybe I do McDonald's just one day a week instead of every day for breakfast. Start small, baby steps. You know, once people start to see some progress, they can see, you know, weight removing, they can test their glucose levels, see it coming down, then they get a little progress and start making, it's like a snowball rolling downhill. So maybe this video could help give them um, a little bit more understanding that, you know what, um, my inactivity could be compromising me for not only uh, acute immune issues, but chronic immune issues like cancer. Remember, cancer is almost like an infection because it's evading your body's immune system and it starts to grow out of control. And by the time most people are diagnosed, it's been replicating and, and invading other tissues. So this is really important, friends, for, for acute immune stuff and chronic immune challenges that we're all unfortunately gonna be exposed to at some point in our life. And we might as well start now, make small, you know, consistent and intentional choices in your lifestyle. So as always, I'm grateful that you're tuning in all the way to the end of this video. Uh, I would be honored if you could share this with someone that you would care about. Please hit that like button. And if you want more whiteboard based videos, please leave that in the comments below. Let me know. And we will catch you on a future video down the road. And please do not forget to take advantage of that Skillshare one time offer where you can get the first thousand people that sign up using the link below uh, a free premium membership over at their amazing online learning community. Okay. We will catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.